God wants to do so much more for you than you take him up on every single day. God wants to do so much more than you take him up on. So much more. And Catalyst Church, we are going to be a church. We're not going to settle for anything less, for anything less than what God wants to give us and do for us and do in us every single day. So matter of fact, we're not going to give the appearance of it either. We are going to go after it. We're not a church about appearance. So will you stand to your feet right now? Every message of this, if you can, if you have health issues, by all means be seated. Every message of this series, we are going to start by praying over our own lives what the Apostle Paul prayed over us from a prison cell 2,000 years ago. And that is what we're going to do when I find it. Matter of fact, tell somebody one more time, say, I'm ready. ready. Online, drop a comment. If you're watching live with me right now, say, I'm ready. Say, I'm ready. Paul prayed this. I'm going to read it over us this week, and I want you to become familiar with it because for the next several weeks, I don't know, it may turn into a lot of weeks because I want us. God wants to get us to build our lives not just wide but deep and wide and we're not settling for anything less this is what Paul prayed I want you to pray I want you, I'm gonna say it this week get you familiar with it y'all ready yeah. then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him keep in mind he's in a jail cell praying this over a church he planted your roots will grow down deep into God's love and keep you strong and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how, say that with me, deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now, all glory to God who is able, th who is able through his mighty power at work. Where? Within you, me, within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. That is what Paul believed. He lost his head because he knew that God is enough. Will you lift your hands right now? Say it with me. Say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. We want a life that is deep and wide, Jesus. We want a life that not just everybody's about appearance right now. Everybody wants to give a persona, Lord. We want you. We want the real thing. We want to live lives of depth. And, Lord, I just pray that we open up our hearts. Speak to me. Speak through me. And let's grow in Jesus' name. Amen. My title, my title today, before you're seated, my title is Don't Give Up On Here. And before you're seated or as you're seated, find two people around you and tell them my first point. Here it is. Don't give up on this season. Don't give up on this season. Mm -hmm. Here's how we roll. Here's how we live. Here's how you and I in most seasons or every season we live. We see breakthrough. We see breakthrough is breaking out of this season. When, you're like, when your back's against the wall, you see breakthrough is breaking out of this season. Getting, we see the gospel and the promise and purpose of God in our lives. We see the, the blessing of God and what God, we see our dreams as a place that we get to. Getting there, if I can get the pay raise, if I can get the promotion, if I can get a wife or a husband, if I can have a baby, if I can, if I can be a superstar on the field, all my young people, if I can not be single, and if, I can, if my parents can be proud of me, if I can get out of debt, we see the, if I can finally feel good about myself, if I can get to a place that I feel good enough, that I am successful in my own eyes, that I am significant, that I don't walk into a room and feel inferior. We all have these things that we feel like the gospel is a place that we get to. And until we get there, we're really not in it. And we spend our entire lives praying and believing God for the next step, the next goal, the next level, and we're trying to get to this place. That is not a deep, wide, deep life, and it honestly will never be wide. The gospel, y'all, is so much better than that. It is so much better than that. And Paul was in a jail cell experiencing the peace that he told the church at Philippi that passes all understanding because he had peace. He knew, God, I trust you with my life. 
He didn't have to pretend to trust God. He trusted God. The gospel is so much better than getting there. And I'm telling you, if you want some true depth in your life, you need to quit begging God to get out of this this season and be obedient right there in it. Because let me tell you something about this season. If you're still in it, God isn't done with it. Matter of fact, I want you to say that with me right now. Say, if I'm still in it, God isn't done with it. Say it one more time because we really need to let that hit home. If I'm still in it, God isn't done with it. Don't you dare give up on here. Don't you dare. The gospel is not a goal. The gospel is not a promotion plan. The gospel is not an escape plan. Man, we have preached fear. And every Sunday, most pastors preach about not going to hell. My God, give somebody. That's not what Jesus taught. The gospel is not an escape plan. A get out of, the gospel is so much more. The gospel isn't about someday. It isn't about one day. It isn't about maybe. It isn't a daydream or a fantasy. It's better than that. Tell somebody I'm ready. I'm ready. The gospel is better, and I'm about to prove it to you. Matthew chapter 4. We're going to start there. From then on, Jesus began to preach. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is what? Near. He didn't say far. He said throughout the Bible, it said throughout the New Testament, the kingdom of God is at hand. It didn't say it's in heaven. It said it's at hand right here, right now. The idea of repentance in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, repentance was changing what you're doing. In the New Testament, Jesus changed the game and even deepened it. Repentance, when we, we hate, people don't, they don't do the word justice. Repentance isn't just changing what you're doing, it's changing why you're doing it. A lot of people change what they're doing, but they don't change their hearts. They still got terrible, piss poor attitudes. And Jesus says, repent. He says, repent. Because why? The kingdom of heaven is near. He said, change your heart and change what you're, change what you're doing and why you're doing it. And if you'll do that, you'll actually experience the kingdom of God, which isn't far away. It's right here. It's right in front of you. Tell somebody, don't give up on here. Matthew chapter 6, the religious people of Jesus' day, we call this the Lord's Prayer, but we miss what Jesus was saying. The religious people like to panic. Religious people, the Pharisees of that day, which were very rigid, they loved to talk about what God was going to do. They loved to say, man, one day the Messiah is coming. One day. And then he comes and they put him on a cross. Don't act like it. We're all blinded. There's a lot of things that haven't changed in 2,000 years. We love to judge them, but we're the same people in a lot of ways. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus teaches, he says, don't be like them. He's not talking about the world. The world's the enemy. He's talking about the people inside the church of that day. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. You know, sometimes we pray to God like he doesn't know us better than we know ourselves. Mayor, he says, he says, Pray like this. This is Jesus saying, this is what you should be praying and believing me for. And then he says, to start the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. I got the NLT coming up. May your kingdom come soon and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Tell somebody with authority, say here. I love the translation that said, may your will be done here as in heaven. I'm telling y'all, the religious people thought that God, they were so focused and obsessed over what God was going to do. It was about getting there. And Jesus said, my kingdom come, pray this, believe this for your life, guys, here as in heaven. The gospel is so much more than we, than we take God up on every single day of our lives. I'm still not done, y'all. I'm just getting started. Luke chapter 17. (laughs) One day, the Pharisees asked Jesus, when will the kingdom of God come? Hmm. It's a goal, right? Jesus replied, the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. You You won't be able to say, here it is, or it's over there. This is Jesus. For the kingdom of God is already among you he said y'all these religious people all these people that think they know everything about a book they read the word of God as a textbook and they don't really do anything with it he said they're obsessed with getting there they're obsessed with obsessed with I've got to get to a place and he says I'm right in front of you and what they did the Pharisees is the 
God was right in front of them. What they were begging God for, what they were so blinded by because they were obsessed, is Jesus was standing right in front of them. The answer to their prayers was right in front of them in the season that they were in. And you know how blinded they were to it? They not just ridiculed him, they killed him. And do not judge them. We do it in different ways all the time. We're begging God, man, get me, get me out of this season. Get me out of this season. Get me out of this. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. The kingdom of God is already among you. If you truly trust me, you'll take me up on it. You'll take me up on it. I'm still not done. Mark chapter 1. After John was put in prison, this was a very rough time for the disciples and Jesus because he was about to be killed, John the Baptist. He was very down. Jesus went into Galilee like bad season, right? His, his cousin's about to lose his head for something that he was innocent. <laughs> After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the good news, the gospel, right, from God. This is the good news. He said the right time has come. He didn't say it's coming. He didn't say it's getting here, getting there. He said it has come. The kingdom of God is what? Near. Change your hearts. Repent. Change what you're doing while you're doing it. And lives and believe the good news. I'm telling you, we are not obedient with what's in front of us. And you don't like to hear that God's not done with this season because you're done with it. You've been done with the last three seasons, which is why you've been living in default mode, bitter at the world, not telling your spouse nothing, going to bed, hiding and closing out from the entire world. And Jesus literally said, the kingdom of God is already among you. It's near. You want to believe God for something? Believe him for this. Thy kingdom come here. As in heaven. And we're too busy trying to use heaven as an escape plan. And too busy trying to daydream about all the things that we wish we could do to feel valuable and get here. Well, I don't feel smart. So maybe if I get 18 PhDs, no, you're going to feel more dumb because it's going to leave you more empty. Because the kingdom of the gospel is not a promotion plan. The gospel is you're already good enough. It's time for you to start living in it in every moment. Life sucks sometimes, but God's still here. And that is a perspective that will get you deep and wide. But what we're doing, especially the last 18 months, people are talking about going to heaven like they want to hit up a bus today. You are 40 years old. Shut up. Shut up. I mean, you're 40. People, I am just can't wait to glory. I can't wait to glory. I've seen people lose loved ones. They're 34, 24, whatever. I'm just making up numbers. They're like, man, I can't wait to see my, I can't wait to see my so-and-so man live. Because what we've done is we use eternity and one day and someday and next year and my next promotion or my next pay level, maybe I'll start spending my money better. We use it as an excuse and a cop-out. And Jesus knew it because the religious people 2,000 years ago did the same thing. That's why King Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Same crap, different generation. If you're still in it, God isn't done with, done with it. You don't need to be done with it. You better be attentive to this season and quit daydreaming about the next. Because he is not done with it. And I know you've been through some tragedy. And I know some of you, you may have lost everything. But I'm telling you, God is working right here in this season. And you better not give up on here. Because if you give up, give up on here, you're going to miss what God has called you. Your assignment is right now, not, not there, here. You know... You, you're not focused and you're not faithful at your job because you're too busy fantasizing about the job you want instead of the job you have. Don't you dare give up on this job. I can see things that I enjoy and appreciate now because of seeds I sowed at Walmart and at Christ Fellowship, the church I started at. Don't you give up on this season. God isn't going to give you, you think God's going to give you the supervisor job when you're trying to undermine your way to the top and complain your way and try to get everybody's attention? And if you do get the supervisor job, it ain't going to play out. It's going to go sideways just like the supervisor you undermined. You know why? Because you are giving up on this assignment. You are fantasizing about where you want to be because you see what God wants to bless you with is there. And the way the gospel reads and the way Jesus said is, I'm right here. I'm right here in the crap you're dealing with. They may not see you, but I see you. They may not promote you, but I will promote you. Jesus said, pray that will be done here. 
He told them over and over, the kingdom of God is at hand. I'm working. You may not like what you go home to, but I'm working. You may go home alone, but I'm working. Be faithful. Focus right here. The gospel is here. It's not there. There, here, heaven will take care of itself. You, ten years from now will take care of itself when you take care of business today. Amen. That's what the gospel is. That's what it is. Your spouse isn't giving you what you need. But the last thing you need to do is go get, go get what you're not getting at home somewhere else. Because if you know my reputation, I do not believe in staying in toxic relationships. Including marriages. But here's the problem. We've got two extremes in our culture. There's people that wanna, there's people that will never walk away. They'll stay in an abusive, toxic relationship for until they die and they never live. But there's also the other extreme we give up too soon. You quit too soon. The Bible says you need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what He's promised. If you quit, you miss out. And we live in a culture that we either quit too soon or stay too long. And the last thing you need to do is burn a bridge by going getting something on the side just because you don't want to have a conversation and confront your, the, the issues in your relationship. Don't give up on this marriage. Don't give up on this assignment because your spouse, the mother or father of your children, don't give up on right here, right now because God says, you know that thing ain't dead yet? It's time for you to work on it. It's time for you to confront it. It's time for you to be faithful. This is your assignment. Quit daydreaming about somebody who will appreciate you and talk to the person that you're going to bed next to. Here. You want a life this deep and wide? Here. Don't give up on Here. Single people, man, everybody wants to be with somebody. You get to like 19 and a half years old and you start freaking out thinking you're never going to have anybody. For real? For real? Like you just, well, well, I got to find somebody to do life with. I got to find somebody. You don't even know how to do life with yourself. And I'm talking, that's not a matter of age. That's a matter of maturity. There's 70 year olds that don't need to get married. They've been through enough marriages. They, they, they've learned the hard way. They need to learn now and not try, over, try again. Stop. Because what's going to happen is, you know, especially young people, you're, you're trying so hard to find somebody to do life with, and you go from relationship to relationship, heartbreak to heartbreak, all this, and one, eventually there's going to be a relationship that sticks. And you're going you're gonna to build a life more like a volcano. You're going to make kids or mess kids up if you already got kids involved. And before you know it, you've lived so much heartbreak because you've been trying to get there instead of being faithful right here. And the church plays into this. I'm going to tell you, the church people are the worst matchmakers ever. I mean, literally, church, we preach, teach, cultures in church are like, oh, you, it's your next step, marriage. You need to be leaving God for a spouse. They, they miss the scripture. Paul says if you don't have a wife, don't seek one. You know why he said that? Because you'll find what you're looking for when you're looking for Jesus. Tell somebody right now, say, simmer down. They who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Making moves is not trying to get there. Making moves is being faithful right here and you have the wisdom and discretion to make the next step because the goal of your relationship with God isn't getting here. It's being faithful here and trusting Him with there. Simmer down. God is saying be faithful right now. You may be exhausted. You may be tired. But you better quit sleeping on your life. Matter of fact, Paul says in Romans 13. He says to a group of young believers who were in the capital of Rome. The worst part of the world at that point. They were young. He was writing the book of Romans to them. He says this. It is now time for you to wake up from your sleep. Because our salvation is what? Nearer now. Than when we first believed. He says, wake up. Wake up. We live in a world that we sleep on, we sleep on ourselves. He says, wake up. Right now, God's got something right in front of you. Wake up. It's time I've heard in this season, I've heard more wishful thinking than I've ever heard in my life. I just want to, look, if you're talking about it, it's time to do it. Because I don't have to sit up here and tell you what you need to do better. 
You know it. Matter of fact, most of the time you're talking about it. Well, I just, I just, I just, my family, it's time for us to just really show up for church consistently. We love it when we're there. We just don't get there but every two or three months because we don't get out of bed. You're talking about it, quit talking about it and do it. If that's what you need to do, get up, go to church, do it consistently. If you need to get out of bed and start taking initiative at your job, don't talk about it, do it. If you need to be nicer to your spouse and quit coming home being a jerk and being petty, it's time to quit talking about it and apologizing and doing it. Paul was saying, wake up. Your salvation is nearer. Quit praying about the character defects you need to work on. It's not a place you get to. It's something that you need to wake up right now. If you want a life that is deep and wide, you got to quit living in the perspective that has kept you a slave. Because here's the good news. You want to hear the gospel? God wants to use you right now. We live in a culture that you have to earn elite status to be able to be used by God. Went to a church conference, going back to another one in November, taking the entire staff except Connor. He's got a baby home. He's got to take care of business. And they actually were talking about how we made ministry only possible for the elite. So, and we have a culture where people are like, I've got to get to a place to be used by God. Paul told those young Christians at Rome, he said, wake up. God wants to use you right now. You're in the beginning parts of recovery right now. Sucky salary and all. God wants to use you right now. You need to quit thinking the gospel is maybe one day I'll have a story because you know what? You're going to waste so many years not living the story that God has already started in your life because you're trying to pray about something that God's got right in front of you for to, to, to work. He wants to use dysfunctional, broken family, broken home. Young people, you got anxiety? I got it too. Still got it. It ain't going away, but God's still here and he's working right here. It becomes more manageable when you just trust him anyway. I still get crippling anxiety. I just don't live there as much as I used to. Now, God wants to use you right now. Wake up. Show up to your life. Get up out of bed. People are like, I just don't have anything to get up for. That's because you don't ever get up. I just, I just, I don't even, you can't be on time anywhere. Just get up. Alarm clock goes off. You're hitting snooze 17 times. That, get up. Wake up. God's got something for you every single day. The bad days, take it all in because that's where God's working. That's where God's working. And I will tell you that when you put the word of God to work in your life, your life will change. So for the rest of this message, I want to make this very practical for you. I want to give you handles that when you go out of here, I'm going to make it crystal clear what it looks like for you to take God up on today and quit using the gospel as an excuse. Someday, one day, maybe, if I get there, if I feel this. You ready? Tell somebody I'm ready. ready. Here's what it looks like. I'm going to make it hyper, hyper, hyper practical because that's what we all need in a world where nobody, everybody's so confused. We just need to know the next step. Here it is. In the Old Testament, uh, there was a new king, King Joram. He was a bad king. He was king of Israel. He was a very bad, oh, he was a pretty bad king. He was just weak and, and evil. I guess that's pretty bad. And Moab kind of, uh, they, they flaked out on their commitment that they committed to the previous king. And King Joram, it was, they had to go to war because it was just, it was long story short, it had, they had to go to war. And Israel was actually split in two kingdoms at that point. They were like in a civil war. So there was a king of Judah and Israel, southern and northern kingdom. Uh, Israel had to tag team this to go to war with Moab. They had to do it. Moab was being ridiculous. They had to fight wars just like we do every single day. You get up and you choose the battles you fight, but we all have battles to fight. And what happened is they teamed up. And, the, and they went out through the desert to go fight Moab. And the New Living Translation says it best. It said they took a roundabout um, way, direction to get to Moab. And what happened is they spent seven days trying to get there. And they ran out of water and out of food. They ran out of everything. They were about to starve to death. They were about to starve to death in the middle of the desert because... They took this roundabout long way to fight a war and they ended up weak and exhausted. You've taken a lot of roundabout ways if you've lived long enough. Maybe your life is one big roundabout. I don't know. Maybe I saw you nose roundabout. You don't do anything the easy way. And what happens is you end up hungry. 
You end up hungry. You end up starving. I got some hangry people in the place. I got some people like, you need to shut up right now. I'm ready to go to lunch. I, by the way, I don't usually have a taste for food at lunch. I'm usually just one want to go home and get a Gatorade. Today, I'm getting me some biscuits from Corner uh, court, uh, Courthouse Cafe. I'm just like, I want a biscuit. Leave me alone, baby. I'll lose the weight. Give me money through Wednesday. I'll lose it all. Watch. I'll work and it's all gone. I got some hangry people in the place. You get hungry, you act a fool. If there's one thing you'll make a fool of yourself, my most level people, hunger, hangry will do it. You're not yourself when you're hungry, right? You that? And the sneakers really don't do it for you. That's just a stupid commercial. Uh, and when I'm hungry for a meal, sneakers will just piss me off. That's a mediocre candy bar anyways, mediocre candy bar. Uh, be quiet, Randall. We get along so well because you're the same type of diva as me, and I, and I can put up with you and you can put up with me. I love you too. I digress. <laughs> there end up. But here's the thing. Is there's a lot more than physical hunger that we live in every single day that this story is, is talking about. You're mentally exhausted. Emotionally drained. You live your life trying to get wherever you think you need to get to feel that you're where you need to be. And you end up completely empty. Which is why Jesus said all those things. You've roundabout, roundabout, hard way, push everybody away, push good things away, and you end up starving. You end up broken. You know, the opposite of peace is confusion because there's no clarity when you're confused and you end up completely insecure. Why'd they reject me? You're empty. Why do I feel this way? You're empty. You're starving. And Israel was at this place. They were completely just hungry. And they realized they need a word from the Lord. And they asked Elisha, who was, the, who, was the, who was a huge prophet in the Old Testament, to come talk to him. And Elisha gave them this word that I want to give you today because it applies. Your, the details of your story are probably different than theirs, but I promise you the principles are the exact same. That's why the word of God will speak to any situation in any generation. Elisha says this. He then said, God's word, dig ditches all over this valley. Here's what will happen. You won't hear the wind. You won't see the rain. But this valley is going to fill up with water, and your army and your enemies will drink their fill. This is easy for God to do. He will also hand over Moab to you. He said, you aren't going to see the water. You aren't going to feel it. Just like in every season, the things that are eternal, the Bible says, are unseen. But I'm working. And if you want to hold what I've got to give you, you better dig some ditches. God said to them, I will take care of the war and the water. You dig the ditches to hold it. Sounds ridiculous, right? They're about to starve to death. They're half dead. And he says, I don't. Muster up whatever energy you got because whatever ditches you dig is what I'm going to fill. And I know the details seem different to yours, but here's the principle, and here's the principle to your life. You need to start digging some ditches. And what that means is you need to start making some changes in your life. If you want your life to be different, you better do some different things than what's got you the same stuff. It's time to start digging some ditches, Catalyst. You may need to have some different habits, have some different attitudes, some different spirits. You may need to, I don't know what you need. You need to hang out with some different people. You need to ask some people to leave. I don't know. You need to start praying God to get you some better friends. But you've gotten so good. See, the reason ditches are just the right height to hold something. Holes, when you dig a hole, you get stuck in it. And you just dig it deeper and deeper. And graves are for dead people. And the thing is, you don't even have to dig graves. What usually happens, we don't dig graves. We, um, uh, we jump in other people's before we even dig our own. And God says, dig ditches. Dig ditches. Dig ditches. Y'all can take your time. I got a little bit more, man, but thank you. Dig ditches. Dig ditches. Different decisions. And for the rest of this message, if you trust God to fill the ditches that you need to dig in your life, it's time to dig them. And quit living in default mode, praying about one day and dig some ditches today. So for the rest of this, 
I'm going to point here and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, quit looking. I'm going to point to you real quickly and you're going to say, dig ditches. We ready? Let's practice. Quit looking. Quit looking. All right. You need to do some things differently in your life. I know you want a husband, but you don't become a wife on wedding day. You become a wife today. You grow now. You want to you wanna be a husband? Husbands, uh, you don't live like a husband today. The last thing you need to do is become something that you're not. You need to grow right now, today. You need to grow. You need to dig some ditches. You need to quit begging God and looking for somebody or somebody to do life with and build a family with. You need to quit looking. Dig ditches. Dig ditches. Because here's the thing I needed to tell you. So that those holes that God said dig, it was for that season. You see this, right? What God was promising to provide to them wasn't for there. It was for here. They weren't getting out of the desert if they didn't dig ditches. They were going to starve to death. It was for here. And you aren't going to be able to hold what God wants to provide for you, what he's promised you, if you don't start digging some ditches. You're going to spend your life dreaming about here and God saying, dig ditches and obey me here. Man, you want God to bless your finances, but you don't save you don't give, you just spend. Spend on ridiculous stuff that you can make excuses, but if you're really honest with yourself, it's ridiculous. Credit card to credit card, Peter to Paul. House to house, car to car. <laughs> that, that's a hole. That's a grave. That's not a ditch. And you wonder why you live in default mode and you, you mess around. You got to make a ton of money because you make plenty of money, but you got to make more because all you do is spend and you're not even generous and you're digging a hole, not a, not a ditch. Because that's where you're at. You you're want to get there. I want to be there. I want to feel better. That house can be seven times bigger and you can have the 10th house. It's not going to make you feel any better because the gospel is today. <laughs> Good things in your life tend to end badly. Typically, you got this great thing. You're so excited, ends badly. You know why? Because you live your life insecure. You smother people. You piss people off because you don't believe in them. You don't even mean to be divisive, but you sow seed in, of division. It's your work. I'm telling you, they do it. In, I've seen people do it in churches, spend their life preaching the gospel that everybody's worthy, but they're the ones trying to earn their worth preaching to other people. My God. You let people stay that you need to ask to leave your life. You let people treat you disrespectfully, and you get you end up acting a a dang fool because you didn't set boundaries with somebody that is a hole not a ditch that is a grave that one day you will die in hungry because you did you were praying so much about one day someday instead of being faithful and digging some ditches today he said here's the word of God Elisha said dig ditches all over this valley it was for today and you want God to heal your family Look in the mirror. You want God to heal your marriage? Look in the mirror. I don't care what they did. You're responsible for you. You're responsible for you. Doesn't matter how bad what they did is. You are responsible for for being the person and growing into the person that God has already made you. It's time for you to receive it. You want to show, show up in your family. Be present. My God, one day don't whine when your kids don't make time for you when you didn't make time for them. You've been digging holes and graves and God is saying, dig ditches. Because I want to give you something that you're, you're going to starve and thirst to death sticking out your tongue when God is dropping water and things to give you life because that's not enough. You got to dig it if you want to hold what God wants to do in your life. And you know how you dig? You're obedient right now. Right now. Sobriety and stability doesn't just happen in your life sobriety and stability won't happen for you until you actually decide that you want to be sober and start living a life that is mature because if you're honest with yourself 
Yeah, there's people, I think one of the biggest things about addiction is they, 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 you have to get past that place where you're pissed off that you can't use or drink or have fun. That life was never fun. Oh, but them glory days. Now look what it cost you. That ain't fun. <laughs> that ain't fun. And when you finally really want it, you'll start digging ditches instead of holes and graves. God says, dig ditches because I got something for you. I got something for you. You want a breakthrough? You want a breakthrough in your life? Quit begging God to get up, get to a place and be obedient right now. Dig some ditches. Because when you decide to dig, when you decide to dig, I want you to know, the deeper you dig, the more you can hold. The deeper you dig, man, your marriage and your childhood or your life or your relationship with your kids may be dysfunctional. You can dig today. You can dig. And the deeper you dig, the more that ditch is going to hold. And God said through Elisha, dig ditches all over this valley. If you do nothing, you can dig holes, you can dig graves. And if you do nothing, I'm going to tell you, you won't die tomorrow probably or next year. But one day you're going to die hungry, thirsty, insecure, starving, never having, having never lived. And you're going to die alone, lonely. Even you got people around you, you can't receive their love. Doing nothing is doing something. That's a hole. That's a hole. And Paul prayed that we would live a life that is deep and wide, that we would know how deep and how wide his love is. I'm not going to build a two-inch hole. I'm not going to dig a two-inch ditch. I'm not going to be a two-inch person. I'm not going to be have a two-inch spirit. I'm not going to stay in two-inch places and situations. I'm not going to stay stuck in roundabout relationships. And you don't have to stay stuck getting roundabout, living a roundabout life and getting roundabout results. You can dig ditches today. The gospel, Jesus said, the kingdom of God, I am right in front of you. I can change your life today. And it's when you decide to be obedient every single day.